Senator Galvez on debate. Dear colleagues, I rise today to speak in third reading to Bill C-17, which appropriate funds to departments for expenditures related to their operations and programs. The final destination of this fund is outlined and defined in that 2020-21 main estimates and supplementary estimates B, on which the Standing Senate Committee on National Finances reported yesterday. Dabor, je First, I'd like to thank all Senator members and staff of the National Finance Committee for their conscientious and rigorous work during the study of this bill. In particular, I'd like to thank Senator Forrest for his comments and explanations regarding his request that the Finance Committee be given the mandate to study a clean and fair economic recovery that would put the well-being of Canadian society at the heart of its objectives. I want to thank the committee for directing the government to increase our domestic capacity to develop, manufacture and produce coronavirus vaccines, medical countermeasures and personal protective equipment. C-17 includes a program expenditure to allocate to the Department of Finance a one billion sum provided to the government of Alberta to, quote, close inactive oil and gas wells and rehabilitate the well sites, end quote. Section 7.5 of the National Finance Report hints at the fact that the orphan and abandoned wells issue is extremely complex and there is uncertainty regarding when and how the wells will be remediated and how this will result in job creation. I wish to focus my remarks on this particular aspect of C-17 that I found to be poorly understood, poorly communicated, and lacking transparency. This is the final installment of the government support announced in April 2020 of a 1.7 billion transfer to Western provincial governments to help cover the cost of remediating the ever-growing number of inactive and orphan well. This is a single largest COVID-19 pandemic support package given to a specific industrial sector to date. While I rejoice that the federal government prioritizes remediation efforts, I have concerns about the program's design and the lack of strings attached. Since this money serves to cover remediation obligation of the fossil fuel sector, we can consider this support to be another form of subsidy to this industry. Yesterday, we heard Senators Muckler and Pate explaining with passion that millions of citizens living below the poverty line did not receive financial assistance. Meanwhile, the petroleum industry has received this generous subsidy giving further evidence to protesters claiming that there is socialism for certain corporations and capitalism for the poor. As you may or may not know, there are 450,000 oil and gas wells in Alberta, of which over a third are abandoned. They are inactive and have yet to be remediated. A subset of all these wells are owned by companies that have become defunct and are no longer able to repair the damage their well has caused to the environment or to the land owners whom they leased from. These are orphan wells of which there are 5,650 across the country. Oil and gas companies are legally obligated to remediate their wells but are often not required to put the money aside as insurance from the beginning of the operation as is now required of the mining industry in some provinces. This allows corporations to shrink the remediation obligations by going bankrupt and reincorporating into a new form, abandoning their wells, jeopardizing the health and safety of humans and ecosystems. In Alberta, when industry is not able to remediate these wells, the cost is transferred to the Orphan Well Association. This association is funded through industry contributions. However, at the current rate of contributions to this fund, 
My office estimates it will take almost 160 years to clean up existing abandoned wells, soon to be major liabilities. Ultimately, as is the case with the 1.7 billion federal support, there is a real risk this liability will fall back on the public, as only $200 million provided to the Orphan Well Association are meant to be repaid. When government takes action to reduce the harmful effects of irresponsible resource extraction, we protect our local communities, our farms, and our environment, but we do not adhere to the polluter pays principle. Irresponsible fossil fuel industries create pollution, and the federal government subsidizes the cleanup costs caused by their recklessness. If this is the first time you've heard about it, it's because this topic has not received its fair share of discussion in both houses. To put things in perspective, although less expensive, we spent hours analyzing and de debating Bill C-9 the commercial rent assistance benefit in committee and in the House, while we spent less than f five minutes discussing the orphan well subsidy. And there is nothing to that effect in the final report of the committee. Oil and gas industry close to $2 billion. And in doing so, we have sent the signal that it is okay for an industry to ruin the environment, the health of citizens, pollute farms and agricultural soils, and risk the future of our children, because government will step in and fix it. Not only does it send a signal that it is okay to pollute, it in fact incentivizes polluting activities because the companies reap the profit of the commodity while avoiding the externalities attached to it. And those benefits are not even for Albertans or for Canadians, since 70 percent of oil sand production is owned by foreign corporations or shareholders. Struggling fossil fuel companies have already left a multi-billion legacy of liabilities in the form of mine tailings, orphan wells, and disused pipelines. Worst case scenario estimates from Alberta Energy Regulator have put the price tag at around 260 billion for liabilities in this province alone. Despite being legally responsible, these companies have set aside a very small fraction of the anticipated cost and the full burden will inevitably fall on taxpayer exactly as the Auditor General of Alberta pointed out in his 2015 report. It will be irresponsible to expect the industry will or can come up with the required sums, since there has been 79% reduction in oil sands capital expenditures since 2014, and it is expected to decline again in 2020 for the sixth straight year. Colleagues, the worst thing we can do is stick our heads in the sand. We must address and assist Albertans in fair and sustainable ways, promote and support the diversification and sustainability of their economy. Cette financière néglige les principes de... This situation neglects the polluter pays principle, jeopardizes public funds, delays reconciliation efforts, and has been reported as a potential violation of human rights of indig indigenous peoples. 0.1 percent of oil sands lands have been recovered and returned to the province of Alberta to date. Canadians, and particularly those living in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and British Columbia, deserve a transparent accounting of the magnitude of the problem. A recent Financial Post article revealed that Imperial Oil, Sunker, and Canadian Natural Resources, along with lesser known fossil companies such as NR Plus, Alta Gas, and Peito, which all receive federal assistance through the Seuss program, they continue to pay dividends to shareholders during the COVID 19 pandemic. 
Is this managerial practice acceptable to Canadians? Colleagues, I will support Bill C-17, but I will end my intervention by emphasizing the inefficiency and promotion of public distrust of this form of use of public funds. And we like to refer to a recommendation from the white paper my office recently released on the urgent need for a clean and just recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. Financial assistance, if provided, must be accompanied by a strict accountability measures, as well as an enforceable and demonstrable commitment to contribute to human and ecosystem well-being. Thank you very much. Merci. Miigwech.